I'm the Iowa Prairie Girl, and today we're going to take a look at Golden Alexander. It is the end of May here in North Iowa. I am in Saragota County, Northern Iowa, and Golden Alexander has been blooming for a couple of weeks here. Golden Alexander blooms here in North Iowa between May and June. It is a prairie native wildflower. Uh, you'll find it in um, open prairie, but you might also find it um, in the woods, especially if it's in open woods along the trails or on the edge of the woods. As you can see, it's a golden flower and um, a very delicate wildflower. Don't get this confused with its, um, it gets a bad rap. It gets confused with wild parsnip. Wild parsnip grows uh, a much taller. Golden Alexander grows to be about a foot to maybe four feet tall, whereas wild parsnip gets to be five, six feet tall, and that blooms at the end of June and into July and August. So don't get confused. People get, uh, the public service announcements have gotten everyone concerned about any kind of yellow flower that has uh, an umbral. This one is quite safe. Actually, this one is edible as well. Uh, the flower is edible. People say that you can eat it kind of like a broccoli. And then the stem is very similar to like a celery and people eat it um, in their salads like a celery or like asparagus. So let's take a look at the flower. So this is an umbral. An umbral, you could use the word like an umbrella. Um, each flower head is about two to three inches uh, a wide across and it consists of about um, 10 umbrellettes. Uh, so each, each it's, all, it's a lot of different flowers here. So each umbrellette contains about 20 to 21 flowers. And so a total here of this head here uh, has about 250 flowers. A, a, flower a flower consists of five petals and they are incurved, the petals are incurved, so if you take a really close look at them, or if you zoom in them on a picture, you'll see that the petals curve inward. It also have, has five stamens, and those stamens are inserted, meaning that they um, alternate with the petals and they kind of protrude out between each petal. Uh, so that is a lot of flowers. If you look at here, this plant here, uh, each flower head here, I said, consists of 250 flowers. And if you look here, we have a stems shooting up. We have erect stems. Really look, uh, they're shiny, a shiny green, really look like celery. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, probably about 10, 10 stems coming straight up. Um, and you can see that, therefore, there's a lot of flowers here. Um, the leaves. The leaves are also kind of a, a shiny green, and they divide up into leaflets, uh, usually a, a group of three leaflets. Um, of course, like most flowers, the leaves are larger at the bottom, and they get smaller towards the top here. Another note about the leaves is they vary in shapes. Uh, some will say that they're kind of lanced shaped, and others uh, will say that they're more egg-shaped. But um, consistently, though, all the edges or the margins of the leaves are toothed or serrated. Another neat fact about the um, flowers, too, is that the middle umbral is sessile, meaning that it has no stalk. So it's closer, it's closer to the, um, the stem, um, which I found that kind of interesting, that the middle one it has no stalk, and then the other ones stick out further um, and you know they spread out so that you have this um, umbrella like shape. So as you can imagine with all these flowers there's a lot of nectar and pollen here for the bees. So this is a nice plant for early spring for the er for the bees. Um, because the the sh flowers are so small the short um, tongued uh, insects really enjoy Alex uh, golden alexander and take advantage of it. It is also the host plant for the uh, black swallowtail butterfly. I have yet to have the opportunity of seeing a caterpillar on my golden alexander, um, but that would be, a lot of people like to plant this plant in their flower gardens and their butterfly gardens in hopes of attracting a, a black swallowtail butterfly. If you watch my videos, you know I like to uh, learn about the folklore of each plant, and sadly I wasn't able to find much on this plant. Um, 
Golden Alexander, I was thinking that it must be named after somebody, but actually Alexander or Alexanders is a European term for um, for a, a, a wildflower or for a plant. Um, so it's actually just Alexander is a term for a plant, a type of plant like similar to this one. And then the golden obviously is for the yellow flowers on it. This plant is very prolific um, because of all the seed heads. If you can imagine, I'm all the seeds that it has and then all the seeds that it um, then produces, it will spread. If you have it in a, on a, in a butterfly um, garden in your yard, it will spread just so that you're aware of that. Or if you have it, want to plant it in your prairie and you're hoping that it will spread, this is a good plant to have um, not only for the insects, but that it will it'll continue to thrive in your prairie. The other thing that I really like about Golden Alexander is in the fall, the whole plant, um, the stems and the leaves, they turn a very beautiful color burgundy. And so it's actually kind of an accent plant in your prairie um, uh, later in the fall when other flowers are, are blooming. Golden Alexander is done blooming, but the plant itself is still very attractive um, when it turns a burgundy color. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. Like I said, Golden Alexander is edible, uh, but please make sure you do research and make sure you got the right plant before you eat some eat it. Uh, please don't rely on this video as a source for, um, for uh, foraging. Uh, please stay tuned for other videos and, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I hope that you get a chance to get out and see the wonderful. Thanks for watching.